Hi, this is Mike from Windows 7 Forums. In this video, we're going to show you how to do a kit assembly on a Gigabyte UD5 motherboard. We've got six DIMM slots. We have compatibility for the i7, as well as the i5 and the i3. And we also have plenty of slots for PCI 16, uh, as well as a bunch of other features that are great with this Gigabyte motherboard. Let's go ahead and get started. As you can see for our CPU cooler, we have the Hyper 212 Plus. It was rated a 10 out of 10. It works on Core i7, i5, and i3 motherboards using uh, four direct contact heat pipes. Uh, this reduced an i5 machine down to 19 Celsius on idle. So expect good results from this. We'll show you how to go ahead and install that as well. Before we do anything, we want to go ahead and get our cooler all set up. So what we're going to do is open up the box here. Oops. And we want to take out all of the components in this box. The installation of the cooler on an Intel motherboard with an i7 processor requires the installation of a backplate. It's actually very simple once you understand how to do it. We'll go through that. And using this uh, mounting bracket here as well as these uh, sort of uh, bolts and so on and so forth to get things connected. Uh, we'll go ahead and show you how to do that. Let's just get the motherboard set up a little bit and we'll just go ahead and show you the case. And we're going to take out the default uh, case uh, CPU power fan uh, or the, the uh, PSU and we're going to replace it with a much better one. As you can see we have the motherboard turned upside down and we have our uh, mounting brackets set up to a way where we will actually install these on the other side and we'll actually connect them with these on the bottom side and we do this so that we're able to mount this under the heatsink which will allow us to place the megalithic uh, heatsink on top of there without the fan and then we'll put the fan back on. Bolting in uh, the backplate for this device is accomplished by very, very carefully uh, screwing the bolts in place on the other side uh, without damaging any components, uh, without tr touching any other components, and then also using these here uh, in order to screw carefully uh, onto the backplate on the back of the motherboard. As you can see with all bolts in place, you now have a motherboard that is ready for an advanced uh, Cooler Master uh, Hyper 212 Plus uh, heatsink and fan as well as a seated processor with Arctic Silver heatsink and fan. Uh, we're not going to go to that yet. We're now going to get into setting up the case and the mounting brackets for the case. The Centurion 534 is an excellent type of case. As you can see on the uh, side of the case, it does have this large air duct that will be removed in order to supplement the uh, very large graphics card that we do have. This would actually block the graphics card in the PCI uh, E16 slot, um, as well as the, the, uh, the CPU uh, heatsink and fan. So we will be removing that. We'll also be removing this dinky 324 watt power supply and upgrading to a Cooler Master 600 watt power supply, which we actually have right here. And here is our Extreme Plus Cooler Master 600 watt supply 
uh, which is a lot easier to use, much better, uh, and uh, will not fail us. Let us uh, now begin the process of uninstalling this old uh, and antiquated uh, type of uh, power supply, which we will not be able to use, nor will we want to use it uh, in the near future. Careful here before our power supply pops out and falls to the nothingness. Okay, uh, we'll carefully remove this. It can always be used for something else, although I can't really think of what right now. I'll replace it with a good power supply. New power supply has been installed with precision. By examining the mounting holes on the motherboard, we are able to roughly approximate where exactly we will put the mounting brackets for the motherboard. The reason that we put uh, mounting brackets on the case is so that we don't short out the motherboard and this is something that's important if the bottom of the motherboard touches uh, the uh, the case this will create a, a ground problem a short circuit and you will not be able to use uh, your motherboard and it will not turn on so you have to keep the board elevated uh, and this is what we're doing now through approximation, estimation, and so forth. As you can see, uh, this is pretty consistent with how the board is set up uh, on the board. Of course, you're going to run into a problem if you don't do it right. And it does happen. It just is a matter of patience and the matter of setting up a kit assembly of a system, especially one that's expensive and worth a lot of money and time, uh, patience is key and you're going to run into errors, you're going to make mistakes and when that happens, rather than go crazy, you're better off taking a 10 minute break, which I'm about to do right now. Of course, uh, <laughs> I haven't made an error yet that I know of, but I would like to take a break. One thing we have found now is our side bracket for the uh, UD5 and this was a very important discovery because we previously had one that was the wrong one and as you can see here we want to align this properly uh, when placing the motherboard into the case. Uh, the reason for doing this is to prevent a short in case part of it touches the, uh, the, uh, the case as well as a nice look. We don't want to leave pockets uh, open on the side of the board so we place this uh, piece here and uh, we do not place the wrong one which we had here. I believe this is from some other wacky uh, uh, possibly uh, board uh, computer that was set up at some time junk but we'll use this one. This is the right one and this will make life a lot easier. As a matter of fact, we can put the, place that in first and then carefully move the motherboard into place and then start screwing in the screws into the slots that we uh, created. With 8 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, our system is looking good. With a solid state hard drive and a 3.5 inch drive bay enclosure connected into an, a uh, SATA port, we're also looking good. Uh, we're just about ready to unleash our secret weapon, which will be our video card. We have 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, a powerful solid state hard drive, and room for expansion, especially with eSATA. So why don't we check out a way to absolutely turn this machine into a killer gaming machine. Here you have it, folks. This is the Sapphire Vapor X Radeon HD 5870 with 1 gigabyte of DDR5 memory, overclockable. Uh, it's a DirectX 11 card, 
and it is ATI. It is not NVIDIA, which has sort of abandoned the market, gone super expensive, and kind of sucks now. We have ATI Radeon 5870. Let's go ahead and set this baby up. Our graphics card is installed. All that's left is the CPU, heatsink, and fan installation. This is one of the most delicate operations you can perform. We'll go through it step by step. The i7 processor has now been seated. As you can see, we have the world class Arctic Silver 5. We will be using this with a matchbook to place a small coating of Arctic Silver onto the processor surface. As you can see the coating is evenly distributed and we quickly now remove the sticker on top of the Cooler Master Cooler. We want to place the cooler on top of the processor. The cooler has now been placed on top of the processor. As you can see, the fan is missing, and our work here is not done. What we need to do now is take our mounting bracket, which is here, and we want to slide this underneath, and then expand it out and screw it in each one side by side. For the type of socket that we're dealing with, the screwing in of the brackets is quite complex. Uh, it's actually very, very difficult, but we have nonetheless secured the heatsink very well using a power screwdriver. Very careful not to hit any of the delicate transistors that are all around uh, this area of the motherboard. We do not want to hit these whatsoever. And now all that's left to do is place the fan on. As you can see, you have a back, backside case fan blowing out. So you want to put generally the uh, CPU fan on the other side. Make sure to connect it into the CPU fan uh, terminal there, the uh, right there and you will be good to go with this machine. Uh, we'll make sure that it works momentarily. Well, as you can see everyone, we've installed uh, this machine on a television set, HDMI, and we're installing Windows through a USB stick. The machine is uh, quite big, but it's a good TV stand. It serves as a good TV stand as well. And uh, the installation wasn't too difficult. When you, once you understand uh, how to mount a uh, bracketing system for a good cooler, uh, your options are really limitless. And once you start using solid state drives, you really, really eliminate that whole problem of uh, the drive failure and the disk I.O. usage. Uh, solid state drives combined with an i7 and a great graphics card mean uh, great performance on games and multimedia and you'll definitely enjoy it. Uh, we're installing Windows 7 right now and this concludes our video. Please visit us at windows7forums.com for more cool stuff such as this. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.